so now i am just going to tell you pushover analysis uh, it's a kind of uh, non linear static analysis now we are doing like a static analysis now this is like a non static linear analysis we can say pushover analysis and it is subjected to a gravity loading in pushover analysis we can able to have only gravity loads and uh, what we can say like it is like controlled lateral load pattern which continue continually increases through elastic and inelastic behavior until uh, ultimate condition is reached like when earthquake happens you know like what is like uh, ultimate condition how it like uh, going to break the structure and uh, that we can able to study from uh, pushover analysis and we can able to evaluate the seismic capacity of our uh, structure or existing structures and we can able to go for retrofit uh, like uh, designing for our existing structures after analysis through this okay and we can able to go for a performance based design of new building which can able to rely on ductility so to resist our earthquake forces if it is like a new building then we can able to study the ductility uh, which is like going to resist our earthquakes and if it is like a old structure then we can able to find out like how it is going to break at which point it is going to break and we can go for retrofit options okay normally we are going to use two methods for this like first one is like displacement coefficient method uh, and then capacity spectrum method so two methods we do have but stack pro going to analysis through displacement coefficient method okay so push over analysis in stack pro like uh, going to consider displacement coefficient method and uh, it is like uh, having code books reference so stack pro like uh, designed like uh, software like considering like a fe ma 356 is to 2000 code book so you can take note of the method actually for pushover analysis displacement coefficient method stat pro is like considering and the code book fe ma 356 is to 2000 federal emergency management agency fe ma and then atc 40 applied technology council atc so these two code books like a reference to our stack pro okay now i can able to tell you like uh, so we have a building like this so we have na so here we can able to apply the lateral loads so the lateral load we can call it as w and uh, how the building going to deflect so from this to this point now so this displacement called roof displacement and we are going to get a base shear out of it so base shear so this is called lateral deflection diagram and for this uh we can able to consider so x here x values and also base shear here so the curve we will be getting like this so this is called capacity curve capacity curve and uh, at this point if you want to like uh, uh no you can go for this point uh, one point and uh, at this point uh, and uh, so this is the point so like this we can able to study this graph so capacity curve okay this is what like a pushover analysis so we are going to find out the base shear okay now this part you understood na like theoretical part so this pushover analysis mainly for steel structures only and this is not for like rc structures so i'm just going for file and then new push over analysis and then open structure wizard and i'm just going for a frame model and i'm just going to take as it is and this i am just going for support first
So I'll take the property, so property, and then I'm just going for section database. And here I can go for a summer. And then I'm just going for a center view. So, so the 3D rendering we are getting, this is our steel structure. So which is having this kind of uh, steel columns and steel beams. Now I'm just going for so loads and definition where the definition we can go for pushover definition. So pushover definition I'm just going to add and here we can able to go for input. So this section 5.5 and section 5.6 it is considering which code book FEMA 356 2000. Okay, and uh, we can able to choose like a moment frame or a braced frame. Uh, I'm just going for moment frame. We don't have any bracings and we can go for include effect or ignore effect. I'm just going to consider include effect. Uh, if you want to specify the values manually without the code reference, we can go for. So you can select it and you can select it and you can able to input the value. Otherwise, I can choose the general input parameter as per the code and I'm just going to add it. So here we, we can able to see that and then uh, I'm just going to add. So this define input we have added and loading pattern. I'm just going for auto load and uh, total vertical distribution of base shear. If you want to specify the total base shear something you can able to put otherwise not needed, but you need to select this. I can just go for any of this method. Okay, for example, I'm just going with method one. This also we can able to refer the code book. And I'm just going for number of push load steps. So by default 100, we can go for 100 as it is under different spectrum details. So this is like default and we can able to like to choose the category of our site depends on the section. Okay, for example, these things sir, we can able to go for code book. FEMA356-2000 PDF. So this code book, you can able to search in the uh, internet and you can able to find it easily, whatever the code book. And uh, this is what the FEMA code book. Okay, and then I'm just going to find that uh, number that we can have like 1.6.1.4.1, 1.6.1.4.1. Can you able to see here we are getting like class A, class B, class C, class D, class C, class F. So that's why here we can able to select it. Okay, so you can able to like read the code book and you can able to select the site category. I'm just going with class D as it is. And then you can go for the table value. So it is like a table 1.4. So table one four here we have table one one now. So table one four we can able to go, and it is like a um, class D I have chosen. So I'm just going to take a which value, like at short period, and then the one five. So at short, uh, this is like um. One point four I'm going to take, and then. To 1.4 and then the two I am just going to take is yes, one. So you can able to refer all those things. Okay, 1.4 and two we will take. 1.4 and then two I'm just going to add it. And then I'm just going for inch property. This is important. FEMA inch property and then I'm just going to add. And then different solution control. We can just. Uh, so if you want to specify some base shear, otherwise uh, you can go for directly and then you can go for selecting Z axis and then the just a 0.5 meter and you can select some uh, joint number. So I'm just going to add it. So this one I sent to view. So the inch. Now you can go for load case detail and add and here we can go for gravity load. So gravity load. 
so in gravity load i'm just going to add a so where it is that gravity load i'm just going for yeah self weight x direction and self weight y direction and self weight z direction also i'm just choosing and the same you can go for uh, nodal or member load so member load i'm just going to have only in a 20 kN per meter in y direction okay and then i'm just going to uh, floor load also and the floor load i'm just going for 3.5 kN and it is like a maximum minimum uh, in that case it is like um so 0 3 0 na no? so here it is like a 3 so 12 15 12 15 12 12 15 12 12 so this is like a float load but this is like a, we are getting like a positive so we should put minus okay this is like float load and this is like a center view and then a center view and then this is like a center view and this one we can just go for that is also we can go for a center view but uh, it will also come here actually select beam parallel to x and select beam parallel to z and i'm just going for a center selected beam uh, still it is like a positive then you're supposed to put minus change now we got it now so gravity load now i'm just going for analysis and print and where you should go for perform pushover analysis and you need to put add so perform pushover analysis and then i'm just going for run analysis Excuse me, sir. Oh, yes, tell me. Sir, I think that analysis of the 5.4 percentage completed. Yeah, it takes time, I think. But uh, I'm trying to like get the result like by 3.45 as fast. Uh, otherwise, we will uh, just uh, see. Now, after, it will be like fast only. We will see, actually. So before 4 o'clock, if we are getting result, we will see. Otherwise, we will continue by tomorrow. See, now we will be getting. See, it is like going fast. Mm. See, we got like analysis successfully completed, like uh, zero error, eight warning, seven note. Okay, we can go for output file. So this is like deformation controlled action. Uh, these members, like uh, we have a fail, like instability or joints like that. And then a very weak string error. This is like, uh, okay, this we can able to like modify our structure. So this is what uh, like pushover analysis. See here we are getting the frequency and then the period and then the mass participation factors. So through pushover analysis, we can able to get these uh, values and we can able to study those values. Now I'm just going for post-processing and I'm just taking gravity load. And here you can able to see the pushover tab. So this is what we have uh, done the analysis, pushover analysis. And we can able to see the pushover tab here after uh, getting the result. Then we can able to see the load and you can able to make the load. So like this, you can able to see the values for each uh, each uh, base. You can able to see the base shear here. Can you able to see it? So base shear. So maximum 25 only. So this is what the base shear we are getting. And now we can go for capacitive curve. So this is what capacity curve I was telling now, like uh, theoretically. So here we can able to get. So by directly. Okay. So displacement and the base shear and everything. Now you can go for node results and then the beam results. So the values and everything. So beam result, I'm just going like this. And we can able to see maximum 25 node result. No? See, based on the node result, we can able to see the values and the deflection or displacement. See, it is like, can you able to see the structure, how it is like uh, going to deflect or displace? See, after some point, it will be completely break. Nah? So that's why. So we can able to see the value. It was okay until. Uh, 
nactar after it is just going to collapse so this is what the pushover analysis the same you can able to go for deflections and bending and i'm just going for animation and i'm just going for deflection so can you able to see how it is like uh, animating yeah okay this is what the pushover analysis so i think are you okay with this also um why do we want to do pushover analysis yeah because like you know like we need to study it actually like um, it is kind of a like a non static linear analysis like a seismic analysis like it is like a static analysis method but pushover analysis we can say it is like a non static linear analysis method and uh, we can able to evaluate the seismic capacity the capacity curve we are getting now and we can able to go for retrofit or we can able to go for a, like a, a new structure and we can able to modify the parameters to get the desired result so this method is mainly for a seismic uh, like it's a kind of seismic uh, uh, like um, protecting how to protect our structure uh, in a seismic loads a gravity load okay and how the structure going to perform like uh, and what is the ductility of our members to resist like uh, forces earthquake forces so that we can able to analysis in it <clears throat> 